This program is dedicated to the brave men and women of the United States Armed Forces, past, present, and future. I'm Keith Warren. I'm a hunter. What do you think of that? Look at that. Woo! A fisherman. Two fish on at one time? Oh my gosh! A conservationist. Hey, let go of that nipple. You're done. You're finished. A family man. Life is good. I love you, baby. Love you, too. And I'm proud to be a deer farmer. I'm taking a road trip, and we're going behind the scenes of today's most innovative deer farmers and wildlife management operations in North America. This is Deer and Wildlife Stories. I want you to take a look at that deer right there. His name is Gladiator and he's a living legend in the deer industry. We're in the Texas Hill Country and I'm going to be taking you to Lone Hollow Whitetails. That's where Gladiator, who is now an old man, he's 12 years old in the deer industry, that's an old man, but he's still knocking the deer out of the park, the biggest deer in the country. There are more deer in the North American Deer Registry because of Gladiator and Lone Hollow Whitetails than any other deer alive. And on today's program, we're gonna show you his offspring and we'll take you and show you what the old man looks like today. Cause folks, he's still getting it done. I'm Grant Garner. I manage the deer pens here at Lone Hollow Whitetails. We're just outside of Kerrville in the hill country of Texas. Here in our breeding facility, we have 50 pens with a little over 900 deer. Our goal at Lone Hollow is not to grow five and 600 inch deer. Our goal is to grow big, framey, typical, beautiful deer. And the Gladiator bloodline continues to do that for us, as well as our customers. The Gladiator bloodline is a strong, hardy Texas bloodline, which our customers are looking for all over the nation. All right, here we are. We're in the deer barn right here, and on the wall, it's like the master plan. You'll see the pen layout every pen laid out, what's in every single pen. You can see the alleyways, you got the three-year-olds here, you've got Gladiator XL with yearling bucks, bred does, you've got some marked as empty, but this right here is really a map. So when somebody walks in here and, and says, okay, I'd like to go see Gladiator. He's in pen 32 and trust me, we'll be going to pen 32 today. If you're gonna come on a deer tour here at Lone Hollow, make sure and visit the deer barn because there's more to visiting a deer farm than just looking at the deer. Uh, there's antlers hanging on the wall that all of them are there for a reason. You'll see this big mound of antlers here. These are cutoffs. You take a look at, these are all cutoffs and on the every antler is a number. What happens is that these bucks, as they're held over from one year to another, they cut the antlers off. And the reason why they cut the antlers off is so they don't fight and, and hurt or kill each other. So they remove the antlers as soon as they get hard antlered, which is about the first week of September. They cut them off, and these numbers on them help them ID who the antlers came off of. And so they, they save these, and they'll save hundreds and hundreds of them, a big mound of them like this, and so that way the next year they can go back and say, okay, this one right here is 091. And they'll pick 091 and go back and see what he was last year, compare him to what he is maybe this year and see what kind of jump he took. So when you come to Lone Hollow, you'll want to make sure and walk in the deer barn because I can promise you, you're going to be pretty impressed. Now, as far as the time of year goes, this is the just the beginning of the third week of August, and the bucks are just about done growing. There will be some that are bulbed out on the ends, which indicates, you know, they've got a little bit more blood flow going in there, and they will put a little bit more growth on. But for the most part, as we show you these deer on Lone Hollow today, keep in mind, third week of August, the bucks, eh, they're just about done growing. Okay, here is a water trough, and then Deer pens, we all have water troughs. This particular one is just a galvanized water trough with a float in it. You'll notice water is real clear, real clean. The cleaner the water, the cooler the water, the, the better the deer are gonna be because you want the deer to drink a lot of water. One thing that you can do on these water troughs is that if the deer wind up do need to become medicated, you can actually medicate this water. There's a valve here that you can shut it off, medicate the water for a certain number of days, and 
That way you can make sure and get the medication in the deer. But that's the water system right here. And let me show you how the feed's done. As far as the feed goes, I wanna show this. This is a carport. And a lot of guys are using this system now and it works really, really well. They'll wind up putting carports out here to protect the feed. You'll notice uh, they have little bunk feeders in here. And what happens, this is record rack. This is the textured record rack feed. And that's what they're feeding here at Lone Hollow. That's what I feed. What happens is when you wind up putting feed like this out every single day, you can monitor how much your deer are eating. And I think it's interesting as deer farmers, we get out there and we talk all the time. Uh, one of the questions that the guys that really uh, are serious about this do, they uh, ask each other, how much are your bucks eating a day? And it's real important because you want those bucks eating, especially during the antler growing season, you want them to eat as much as they can so they can put as much on their head as they can. And that record rack right there, I'll tell you something, they love it. Deer and Wildlife Stories is brought to you in part by Bruton Easy Pull Trailers, Deer Guardian Misting Systems, Game Management Software, the North American Deer Farmers Association, Record Rack Deer Feeds, Whitetail Sales and Service, and Newport Labs. One thing here at Lone Hollow is on the fawns, okay, what they wind up doing, they walk the pens every morning when the fawns are being born, and on the bucks they put blue tags in the little buck fawns, and on the does they're going to put little red tags in them, and the reason why is because when they wean the fawns, when they pull the fawns off their mamas, which is going to be coming up pretty doggone quick, rather than having to reach underneath and find out if it's a boy or a girl, they already did that, blues go in one area, reds go in another area, but the fawns right now, you can see they're coming up and they're actually feeding. So some of these fawns are old enough they could be weaned right now. Third week of August and take a good close look at the deer. Some of them aren't real pretty. I mean, you look at their hair, their coats and like, man, what's wrong with them? Well, it's 105 degrees in the shade sometimes down here. These deer are in their summer coat and uh, a lot of people don't ever see deer with their coats looking like this because they don't ever see them really pay close attention to them out in the summer. But in the summertime, depending upon where you are in the country, deer just lose their hair and a lot of times they'll wind up licking and picking hair off each other and all, but the deer during the fall, they all get pretty. I mean, but during the summertime, sometimes they're just not real pretty. All right, so we've seen uh, plenty of does and fawns, and now let's go take a look at some two-year-old bucks. All right, this is a two-year-old pen right here. These, are, these bucks are two, and I know you look at them, you think, well, Geez, they're big. I mean, uh, some of them look like they're three-year-olds, whatever. You'll, you'll notice that the, the deer look all differently. I mean, there's some that are, that well, you know, they've got kickers and some that have got drops. Some are relatively clean, but they're all big, super genetic deer. Most people probably look at these and go, you know, these gotta be three-year-olds. Well, they're not. They are the result of excellent pedigrees. All these deer have got unbelievable pedigrees in the background. There's one thing that every one of these deer has in common is that None of them will be used as a breeder buck here at Lone Hollow. There's not one of them in here that, according to the standards that they've got here, because the standards are so high, that is quality enough to actually breed. And so what happens to these deer? These are great genetic deer. They just don't happen to be good enough genetics to breed. And what they'll wind up doing is selling these deer, and they load up on, on a trailer, they bring them over to different people's places, and they let them go and these genetics will wind up going into deer herds on different people's properties and actually improving the genetics on different people's properties. So uh, although they may not be a breeder quality here at Lone Hollow, they are certainly a breeder quality on most people's places. And so that's what happens to these deer, but take a look at them. Now these are two-year-olds. Now don't get me wrong, most deer out here do not make the cut to do the breeding. There is one two-year-old out here, and we're gonna show him to you on today's show. And when you see him, you're gonna be absolutely blown away uh, because he is so big, it's amazing. Uh, so we'll show you a two-year-old breeder, but these guys right here, these are just two-year-old breeders that will go to somebody else's place to do the breeding there. All right, three-year-olds, right? Yes, sir. Oh my goodness, just take a look at them. I mean, you've got some that are really clean typicals. I mean, just perfect as they can be. And then some that, I mean, look at that one. I mean, he's just got stuff going everywhere. And, and he's a three-year-old as well. 
Yes, sir. They're all three-year-olds in this whole pen. Okay. That is just amazing to me because these deer are not going to be used in the breeding program, are they? These deer are going to be used in other people's breeding programs. Okay. All these deer will, will be leaving this farm come September, mm -hmm. and they'll be going to other farms to breed in those facilities. That is amazing. So, folks, that's what deer farmers do. They raise deer, send them to other people's farms so they can spread those genetics on your farm. Look at Absolutely. that. Three-year-olds. And this isn't all they have. They've got a lot more. Texas has one of the most stringent rules there is in the United States as far as releasing these deer. And what I mean by that is that, what is it, is it two weeks now that we've got to release them yes, before the season starts? And somebody may be thinking, well, why don't you release them in the summertime? The, the answer is that these deer in the summertime, their antlers are engorged with blood. If they get an antler infection, they're gonna die. And so we wanna wait until the antlers become hard antlered before we release them. So what we've got to do is if you're interested in, in deer to stock and to improve the genetics in your property, what you need to do is you need to contact Lone Hollow well before the middle of September so they can set it up, you can negotiate yes, a deal, and then go ahead and get deer delivered before, well, before the deadline. It's time for viewer feedback, brought to you by the Deer and Wildlife Stories YouTube channel. Dear Keith, when I purchased my ranch, I knew I wanted bigger deer, but honestly, I'm not sure how to go about doing so. I need advice on purchasing bucks and bread does as well as on my management plan. Any words of advice to an amateur? Kevin Wade. Kevin, uh, words of advice is seek the help of a professional, somebody who knows what in the world they're doing. I do help people. You can shoot me an email and give me some more specifics what you're exactly looking for. But the deal is, if you want to improve the genetics on your piece of property, you got to bring in new deer. Simple as that. That's a great question. Got a question about deer farming or a comment about the show? I'd love to hear from you. Make sure and shoot me an email and also watch all of our programs and outtakes as well right here on the Deer and Wildlife Stories YouTube channel. Deer and Wildlife Stories is brought to you in part by buckbreeders.com, DNA Solutions and the North American Deer Registry, New Dart, Shock Effect Probiotics, and Keith Warren's Texas Hidden Springs Ranch, the best value for Texas trophy deer hunting. All right, right here you can see this is the Deer Guardian misting system. And what serious deer farmers are doing, they're putting this system in around their pens. The reason why you can see that, that's insecticide that goes out. It goes off here 11 times a day. There's some big tanks that they mix the mixture up in and then it's all done electronically. There's a timer on it, it'll go off for a few minutes and what happens is that mist goes out, drifts across the pen, kills the insects and it reduces the stress on the deer. Okay, so these are three-year-olds? No, sir, these are actually all two-year-olds. Really? This whole pen is two-year-old bucks. Woo, who is that one back there? He's just got tons of uptines. Yes, sir, that's Gladiator 3. That's the next superstar in the line of Gladiator. Wow. Off the charts as a two-year-old, you can tell. I, I look at him, I'm going, you know, folks, that deer right there, uh, there's no telling what he scores. That deer right there, that is an incredible deer. Absolutely. You know, he overshadows everybody else in the pen, and they're all big. Absolutely. Without him, there would be several other great deer in this pen. But he's head and shoulders above everybody. He's the future of this place right here. Yeah, I mean, that deer right there, you can bank on that. No, absolutely. That, that deer is not for sale. This deer has no price tag on him. He's, he's not for sale. He's never going to be for sale. Uh, what is available is his semen. There's only so much a year that we're going to pull off of him. Mm -hmm. So it's first come, first serve, obviously. There's a limited amount, so there's already a line formed for it, and we haven't even pulled off of him yet. Boy, he is a phenomenal deer. The Gladiator bloodline here at Lone Hollow is one of the most common bloodlines in the North American Deer Registry. Take a look at this buck right here. This is Gladiator Elite when he was five years old, a direct offspring from Gladiator. And he's 33 and 6 eighths wide, and his Boone and Crockett score is 306 inches. And some people may think this is kind of freak of nature, and I say, well, not really. The reason why is because the Gladiator bloodline is one of the most consistent producing big buck bloodlines there is in the country. Let me show you another descendant of Gladiator. All right, here's another great producing sire here at Lone Hollow. His name is Walking Tall, and this is what he looked like at four years old. 
Here's a buck that uh, most people in the deer industry know. His name is True Grit. Take a look at him. He's directly out of the Gladiator line. That's his rack at three years old. He was 35 and a half inches wide inside and he scored 290 inches. This next year we're gonna show you, you pay real close attention to it because this is a two year old set of antlers and you're not gonna believe what he looks like at three. Okay, take a look at this, a two year old buck. Uh, his name is Gladiator XL. Take a good close look and now let's go see him at three. All right, we showed you what Gladiator XL looked like at two years old. An unbelievable deer will now feast your eyes. Look at him right there. Boy, did he ever blow up or what? Absolutely. Holy smokes, and he's three years old. What are y'all yes. feeding? We're feeding the record rack texture 18% during the summer. Holy smokes, well he flat put it on. I mean, at two years old he was a beast, but this is just, look at him coming. He is absolutely ridiculously huge, and he's beautiful. I mean, he's white. Absolutely. He's, he's just a real pretty deer. What did they say earlier? They told us that Gladiator was the most registered deer there was in the North American Deer Registry, right? Yes, sir. He's the most prolific breeder of all time. And you can see why. I mean, look at that right there. That's an unbelievable buck. What's unique about this deer in special is in his pedigree, on the top, he has the whole Max Bow line. Mm -hmm. And on the bottom, he has a Gladiator. So he's got the two best bucks that's ever walked this earth in his pedigree. Holy smokes. How about semen? How would somebody go about getting some semen out of that deer right there? We sell semen off of him each year, as well as his offsprings now that he's of breeding age. If anybody is interested in semen, you can contact Jeff. And uh, Jeff Carr will get you hooked up. He can answer any of the questions that you've got. but. Gladiator XL is, he's a, he's a beast. Why do you have him in here with the one-year-olds? Tell everybody okay. the, the, the rationale behind having him with one-year-olds. What we're doing here is he's so valuable to us that we want to limit the chance of him getting injured or hurt as much as possible. So we'll put him in here with these yearlings and he'll be the dominant buck and he won't have any problems competing for dominance. No one else is gonna come bother him. He's gonna own this pen and he'll be the dominant buck with no threats. Well, look, he, he's got a great demeanor. I mean, he's very photogenic and it's obvious he is the man in this pen. He is, he's unbelievable. Well, there's some nice yearlings in here. I mean, look at this. You got some really exceptional yearlings. They are yearlings, right? Yes, sir. The only one that's not a yearling in this pen is the old man. Gladiator right back there, the yellow tag. Yeah, well that's the old man, look at him. That's him. He's not gonna come up here like these other guys. Holy smokes, folks, take a look at that deer right there. He changed the industry. Literally, he was a game changer and, and, and it still is a game changer. I mean, that deer right there, I, I, would, I wouldn't even wanna guess how much money that deer has made people. I mean, you start thinking about that, I mean, I promise you it's way over a million dollars. Well, he's 12 years old this year, so he's been breeding for a long time. He's still breeding up to this day. Siemens is available. His offsprings are available. The most prolific breeder buck of all time. And, and that deer right there, I mean, look at him. I mean, in, in the wild, first off, I don't know of a deer ever that would live that long in the wild. And, but that deer right there at 12 years old in a breeder pen, he is in great shape. I mean, physically, just look at him. He's absolutely healthy. He's always been healthy. His whole bloodline, that's the best thing about him, is all his descendants, as well as himself, they're all hardy bloodlines. They live a long time, never sick, never injured, very hardy bloodline. And the, and the cool thing is about the gladiator line, they're Texas deer. So if you live up north, and you're looking to bring Texas into your herd with a deer that, well, he's prolific and he gets the job done. The old man, he's still getting the job done. Look at him. That's unbelievable. And I'm sure that you have him in a pen like this with these yearlings for the exact same reason that XL is in a pen with those yearlings, right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It's just so he's protected. He doesn't feel threatened by anybody. No one's gonna take a jab at him. He owns that pen and he's the boss. My goodness. That's amazing. He is a living legend. Uh, I, I don't know of a deer breeder, one in the country, 
who uh, hadn't heard of Gladiator or wanted Gladiator in this deer herd anyway. <laughs> That's pretty incredible. That's an unbelievable deer right there and, and really he has been a game changer for the entire industry. If somebody would like more information on Lone Hollow Whitetails, we'll have the telephone number coming up at the end of the show or you can email Jeff Carr at jeff at lonehollowwhitetails.com. Right? Yes, sir. Yeah, get a hold of the best way to reach Jeff is via email. Absolutely. I mean, Jeff is always out here, always tending a deer, and he is hard to catch. The signal's not real good out here in the hill country. But Jeff at lonehollowwhitetails.com, and uh, he's happy to talk deer anytime. You betcha. Grant, thank you very much. Thank you. Folks, thank you all for watching, and uh, next week we're going to show you some more big deer, but I can promise you one thing. There's only one gladiator. <laughs> if you'd like to watch full episodes of our program 24 seven online in full high definition, log on to my website at deerandwildlifestories.com. There you'll find the shows, but you'll also find a lot of outtakes and behind the scenes videos as well. That's deerandwildlifestories.com. Reproductive services for deer and wildlife stories is provided by Dr. Ray Favaro's Whitetail Genetics.